Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about how to create in-camera depth of field for Sketch and Tune. I'm really excited to share this one with you today because it's a really nice technique and I think it can bring your tune shaded animations to life. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. Okay, so how to get in-camera depth of field for Sketch and Tune. Okay, so I'm very excited about this one. This is something that I have wanted to figure out for a long time how to do. And it's always bugged me that, uh, you know, you sketch in tune, you can't actually do in camera depth of field because it's, uh, it's a post effect. Um, so uh, after a little bit of research and thinking, I came up with a nice solution that I'd like to share with you guys today. Now it's not perfect, so um, if you guys are expecting this to actually be something within Cinema uh, that's a one-click option where you just hit depth of field or you know there's some sort of weird plugin or tag, that's not going to be the case. There is an extra step that is involved with this. Um, so just know that this is a, a two-step process that we're going to do here. Uh, but I think it's something that's warranted and it's very valuable because uh, it does give you nice results. All right, so um, what I've done is I've already uh, prepared uh, Sketch and Tune material here and applied it to these uh, little Mario characters um, <clears throat> that I had in my opening scene. Um, and we're just gonna cover actually how to do a depth of field. I'm not gonna go into Sketch and Tune details, but this is under the assumption, you know, you can you can create outlines and Sketch and Tune, whatever, however you want it to look. Uh, I'll let you figure that out. But once you got a look that you like, um, the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to render this. So it's really important that we want to render just a black and white pass because what the black and white pass is going to do for us is it's going to enable us to create an alpha um, based on these lines. So anything that's black will be cut out and anything that's white will stay. Um, so I've actually already done this. Right now we're just working with a single still frame. So I've rendered this out and uh, right now I'm actually just in straight up Cinema 4D uh, standard render sketch and tune. Uh, but what I want to do now is from this scene, I want to pop over to a redshift scene that is set up the exact same way. The only difference is, is that we're going to be using the redshift render uh, versus the Cinema 4D render. Um, <clears throat> so let's do that. So let's go over to our Let's go over to our other scene, and this scene is exactly the same. There's, there's no difference. The only difference is, is that this is Redshift, okay? So we have our setup here, and uh, what we want to do now is we want to actually apply this texture um, to these, uh, these models here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to switch my layout. Uh, let's see. This one? Yeah. Okay, so what we want to do, um, if we look now, we just, you know, we have them. They're cool, whatever. Um, let's bring in that texture that we rendered. So um, I have a material here and then let's go to my textures and this is where the trick comes in. So um, for Redshift, you actually wanna do a camera map. So for your camera map, bring in your camera map and then let's set our path to, here's the image I rendered. So this is the image that came out of straight up Cinema 4D. Um, standard render sketch and tune nothing nothing special it's black and white lines um all right and then let's pipe that into our texture and let's apply that to our output i actually want to apply it to this one and it doesn't matter but i just i always like to apply it to the uh the actual object itself um <clears throat> so what that does is um it gives us uh, it gives us the black and white outlines um, on top of uh, on top of our uh, models, and we still have alpha in the back. You can see everything is black, just as you would expect. Um, so now, what we have is we have essentially cam camera projected our uh, our lines on top of our geometry. Therefore, in theory, if we turn on our depth of field, we should be able to have these lines go out of focus should we choose? So let's try that. So let's go to Boca. Let's turn on Override. And right away, you're going to see, I'm going to zoom in here. You're going to see that we start to get this nice fall off that's happening. So let me, uh, I'm going to actually go to a different setup here. Let's go to my, let's go to this setup. And I have a, um, I'm going to my default camera. So I've set up a, a focal uh, object here. So if I just take this and if I move it, you're going to see over here on the other side, then it changes as I move it. So now I'm focusing on, on the very back 
uh, the very back ones and we can come in here and we can just crank it up like let's go 10 or something crazy and you can see that now it's just it's blooming out like really far and it's it's really crunchy right now but that's just because my render settings are low because I want to want to be able to get you guys uh, quick previews so that's amazing so that's really cool so this is great because now if you see I mean I can just focus on this middle one I can come over yeah um, so that's that's really cool so how do we take it a step further? So this is just a still frame. So if I, you know, if I move, it's gonna break. Like everything is gonna break because my geometry is uh, not lining up. So how do we, uh, how do we combat that? So what we can do, I mean, already this is pretty fun just to play with. Um, but what we can do to take it a step further is if we create an animation, in theory, everything's gonna stick. Um, so let's let's go because this is a camera map. I want to step in here. And let's just say that this is our projection cam. It's our projection cam. And let's just put that in our camera picker. And then I'm gonna copy this camera. And this is gonna be our, whatever, our moving cam. Um, so uh, let's go to our moving cam. And now, if I come in here, you know, with, with, with camera projection, you can only get away with so much. But if I come in here and I just, I move this a little bit, then all of a sudden I can I can start to get a little bit of leeway. I'm going to turn down the uh, I'm going to turn down the um, the blur here. It's quite high. One. Okay. Cool. Um, so if I can come in here and you can see that you know there, there will come a time when it breaks, but if I you know I can kind of pull the camera back a little bit and still get away with it. And I can maybe I can even move it. Yeah, so I can still move it and still get away with it. You can see right here, it's still projecting nicely. And then we're getting this nice, you know, fall off that's still happening with these other lines. Um, and I still have full control of my focus. I can make this front guy out of focus now. And then I can have the back ones. You can see we're losing some line detail here because, um, again, we're projection mapping. So it's, uh, it's, it's a cheat, right? I mean, you can see the line is happening here. So it's, it's definitely a cheat um, and you can only get away with so much. Uh, but let's say you wanna do a big move. Well, if you wanna do a big move, then what you need to do is you need to render out a sequence. So for a sequence, um, oh yeah, I just wanted to show you this too. Uh, well, you know what, let's do a sequence first. Okay, so let's go, um, let's go and open up our sequence. So, so what I did is um, I have two of them here. So let's go ahead and open up move. And let me go to my startup. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. So basically I just did like a really shitty camera move to kind of just demonstrate, um, you know, how this can work. Uh, so that's all that is. I pre-rendered this and um, what I've done is I've built, um, I've built a redshift scene where we are going to, um, I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, cool. Um, and really quick, I'm gonna yeah. Let's let's just go ahead and go on our scene. So let's go to our uh, let's go to our material. And this time uh, in in our camera map, we actually are going to pipe in a, a moving one. So this is that animation that I, that I just showed you. Again, this is pre-rendered. I, I did earlier, so you guys don't have to sit through it. Okay. Um, and then we want to go to animation, and we want to say 25 frames a second. That's what I'm working at. And then this uh, detect the frames, that's great. And then uh, that's good, so now we have our animation. Um, so now let's go to our start, uh, let me go to my IPR here. You know what, I think I'm one frame off, hold on. Let's go frame zero. Yeah, there we go. Um, so uh, let's go to our animation now, and now you'll see that they're actually tracking with my camera and again, this is happening because it's just, it's the exact same everything, right? The only thing, we're just projecting the, the lines on here, um, but we still have our control to where I can come in here and I can still, I can change my focus. Did I set my focus? Let me set my focus. Yeah, I did. Okay, so I can come in here and um, let me get my focus. So now I'm focusing on the back here and you can see that the front is uh, quite out of focus. And then if I come here to the front, now my front is in focus. So really rad, uh, really cool stuff. Um, 
Another thing I wanted to mention is, you know, this is obviously just a base layer, but you can also combine this. So I can combine this, you know, as you saw in my opening animation, I can combine this with uh, the Redshift materials. So I've actually done that already. Um, so this is it with just, you know, just a standard texture on it. And you can see that, you know, again, we're getting this nice fall off that's happening here. And it's actually the Sketch and Tune material. Um, but what if I actually want to have like some shading and stuff in there? So if you want shading, I mean, to me, this is cooler, you know, it gives it a little bit more something, right? It's a little bit more stylized and it's just more interesting. But now, like, I can just come in and I've, I just created some shaders, like, uh, and all I did was I overlaid um, our pass on top of it, our, our sketch and tune pass. So now I can I have the advantage of having the power of redshift and any textures or bump mapping or anything that I want. Um, and I have the power of uh, still having that depth of field and having this like dope uh, fall off happening here with these lines. Um, you know, let's move our, oops, let's move our focus again to here maybe, to the back, and then let's just crank it up like really high. Let's go 10, right? So it just gets right, too high. Let's go five, something like that, whatever. Um, so you get the picture, it works. Um, it is one extra step, but Sketch and Tune is so quick to render. I think it's a it's a totally valid step um, to do. Uh, and then I'll quickly just show you my setup here for like how I overlaid this on top. So this is just my material for the for the uh, the character itself. So this is like my Redshift material. But um, you know what? Let's just create a new one just because it might just be easier for you guys uh, to understand. So let's create a new material, and uh, I'm going to turn off my IPR real quick. Create a new material and then let's go into here and ah, actually I've already uh, I've already got this. Okay, cool. So I'm ahead of myself today. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of these. Oops, just get rid of these. And then I've already created a material that uh, I believe already has it on. It should just be super basic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so here's here's just our, our basic material again. Um, and then let's go and put a new material in here. And so what I can do is I'm just gonna pipe this in and now we have, uh, I'm gonna turn off depth of field here. Now we have just a standard material on there. Um, but if we want to um, combine it, let's just get uh, a material blender and we're gonna set our base material, so this like standard shiny reflective one to here. Okay, pipe it in, nothing changed. And then for our, for our uh, layer one color, let's set that um, to the layer color. And then for our blend, let's just say we want it to be full and additive. And now we've got it on top. So just a quick demonstration. Yeah, you just put it into your layer color. This is your color. Uh, and you want the blend color to be, essentially this is your alpha, so you want this to be white, and then you just set the additive, and they're on top of each other now. Um, and then if I, if I need to color this, um, yeah, I can then go from there and, and color it. Um, but again, this is not a tutorial about how to texture, just a quick, uh, quick food for thought of how maybe um, you can play with this. Okay, so that's gonna about wrap it up for us today. I really enjoyed this one. This is something that is uh, I've wanted to figure out for a long time, and I hope that you guys can put it to good use. And until the next time, I will see you on the next one.